this is a module this is a sub module and it's going to be part of the bigger module here i'm going to be talking about uh, the phillips curve so we'll start with to understand if there is a trade off between inflation and unemployment rate now why i'm talking about this these are the two variables which is inflation and unemployment rate which is part of the phillips equation now these are also the two variables which the the federal reserve and the reserve bank of new zealand which the bank of new zealand follow so this they, they have a dual mandate in this graph data is from 2007 if you look at from 2007 to 2021 the there is a comparison of unemployment rate and cpi the cpi is given basically its uh, items fall the us averages you can get all the data from fred it's freely available online plotted this to just see how they both have moved as of march 1 you've seen there is a rise in inflation which is about 2.6% now the may figures was about 4.15 which i'm going to discuss further this graph which is a similar graph only thing is like if this is data from 2020 till 2021 now here in you also have another variable known as core inflation this module we've already discussed about in the main module that what's the difference between core inflation and headline inflation so this is headline inflation when we are talking about this whole line and core inflation core inflation is something which the fed looks a lot of central banks look at a lot of importance to different kinds of of uh, cpi uh, parameters it could be headline inflation which is prominent among the the ecb or the core the core is actually looked very prominently by the fed it's important to understand why the core is more important because it reduces the prices of food and energy we have also looked at there could be alcohol and cigarettes but food and energy prices become which are very volatile they could be temporary in nature so you want to see something which is not very se seasonal and transient and that's the reason why it makes sense to look at core but you have seen also the core rise here it's gone to 3% over a period of time now this is a excellent graph here you are comparing unemployment rate cpi and cpi core cpi and i have taken 7 months moving average now 7 months moving average is very good to smoothen out any variations you get a fair bit of idea you can do you can calculate a moving average using excel come to this how we do all those calculations and how do we make the graphs when we are looking at the if you compare it with a 7 month or smooth now you have seen again the inflation now here this is a cpi which is headline inflation has moved to 1.9% and the core is about 1.7 if if you see there's been an increase in the inflation out here since this is an average of 7 if the inflation increases or it's at the same level what it is right now whether there is how the inflation and the unemployment rate is moving in united states of america there is a small call there was a risk. i i uh, i looked at the data and what i found is like the unemployment rate was 6.4% on an average between 1 jan 2007 to 2021 now of course this will be on a lesser side because during those times you had great recession and you also had the pandemic so there were moments of outlier so this figure maybe it is a bit distorted however just wanted to look at what sort of unemployment rate was there have a recession the inflation rate would go down now if you look at the unemployment rate of 6.1% in april and inflation as 4.15 we have to understand is the economy heated up uh, as the vaccination roll roll out has been very excellent what we are looking at is like uh, the macroeconomic data also would be much better apart from the social impact what is important for vaccinations and we have seen that as uh, in the graphs before that the asset purchases by the fed have been about 7.8% and usually there is a lag of 2 years for inflation to appear so if you look at and all the stimulus what the projections the middle road is taking is that in the next 2 months the data for the inflation and employment uh, rate is very critical this is because if there is a persistently high inflation and unemployment rate and with a very successful you out in us and europe also much better except for the vaccine inequality uh, around the world the view is that the unemployment rate could come down between 5.5 to 6% the natural rate of unemployment in the us there was a study done it was usually perceived to be between 5 and 6% but sometime the fed sometime back talked about 4.4% but these are widely widely debated 
estimates what could be fair to say that anything between 5 to 6 person uh, would be within the you can say the uh, natural rate of unemployment maybe for the for the time going forward this is something which is a personal view and just for the view of the middle road this is not necessarily the right view so if we feel that the if i i feel that the rate is coming between 5.5 to 6 percent with a persistent high inflation and stimulus more coming up maybe in infrastructure or the fed would have to uh, cut down the asset purchases much sooner than what they have mentioned and a small increase in the rate interest rates could come as early as maybe end of this year or even early next year so this is something which uh, is the prediction now there is a risk of new mutants which will always remain and that is due to vaccine inequality however looking at the data from what what uh, is a projection that the unemployment rate uh, should be going down in the next two three months and the inflation would remain high when we talk about the phillips curve W phillips was uh, from new zealand he was an economist he was in lsc uh, the london school of economics where he came out with the relationship between unemployment and wages and he saw this uh, with in united kingdom between 1861 and 1957 now this was a negative relationship it was an increase in the wages which meant that the unemployment rate reduced which is more people got employed and that's why the wages increased now wages have a direct effect on inflation wages increases what you are looking at as the wage increases the aggregate demand of the of the country or of the region increases and that's why there will be higher consumption so you do should sort of built in into inflation there are a lot of ways you could look at it but what you look at in generally is that increase the wage growth always falls into inflation and inflation is by far much more important in economics so that's why the negative relation between unemployment rate and inflation became the phillips curve so you could read uh, the, uh, the paper by uh, Philip's paper, the relationship between unemployment and the rate of change of money wages rate in the United Kingdom. It's freely available. If you want, you could read. As we have seen, there's a negative relationship. Now we talked about in the longer run, when you're looking at long run, the Philip's curve is vertical. That is the inflation. When you're plotting inflation versus unemployment, the Philip's curve has no bearing it remains at the actual rate of unemployment that's how in economics you look at the unemployment rate and the unemployment rate of six percent means that 94 percent people within the market which is the the work are employed the shorter run the inflation increases if you see as the unemployment rate increases inflation decreases so if unemployment it reduces inflation increases the reason is as in unemployment rate reduces the employment rate increases and as there are more employed uh, people employed there is an increase in the wage growth increase in the wage growth leads to higher inflation you see the employment rate is inversely related to unemployment rate here we are looking at uh, one of the reasoning is very important which i brought in is to look at the expectation augmented phillips curve this is proposed by Friedman and Phelps it's known as the Milton Friedman's reasoning what's very interesting is when you're looking at uh, workers and firms they try to see there was a lacuna present in the theory that actually firms focus more on real wages they are they react to expected inflation and if there's a wage increase they would like the real wages real wages is what you really can value not nominal wages so it removes the inflation factor within the wage concern if you are a human resource person and you're planning ahead you will always look at inflation because you need to be making sure that your lifestyle or purchasing power remains constant or increases you would not ever like to decrease vision wherein u minus un which is basically uh, un is the uh, natural rate of employment so this is the deviation from the natural rate of employment and this is inflation ex expectation so this is very important and W here is the sensitivity between the deviation from the natural rate of employment and inflation. Over a period of time, we know that the curve is always at the natural rate of unemployment. So this is natural rate of unemployment, which you're talking about here. Let's say at that percent is 7%. You have taken a lot of policies, which could a lot of stimulus policies, and you shift 
the curve of LRPC, which has long run Phillips curve to the left. We have seen that the relationship between inflation rate and unemployment rate is negative. So what we'll do is it'll shift the first, which is the inflation is at 1% at point A to point B. The shift is actually on the curve. Now this is a temporarily shift of the natural rate of unemployment shifts to the left for some time. That's why I put T, it's temporary for this point in time. And this new inflation point is B, right? Uh, gone up and the unemployment rate has reduced, which means the employment rate has gone up. At point B, there's a lot of expectation of inflation which builds in. This pushes up the PC inflation as point C. Until the, the natural rate of unemployment comes back, so it moves back here. At this point of time is the curve where the unemployment rate is again at the natural level. We'll see that temporarily it will keep shifting up until it caps under point where it comes back to the original natural rate of employment it's at point D. Now point D which you're looking, this is with the original which is what at, at some percent we started with natural rate of uh, unemployment. So it goes back and you have a new rate which is coming. So at this point of time, at this point D, Phillips curve is at the uh, unemployment where unemployment is at natural. This is the original natural rate. It just shifts and then comes back in the whole particular diagram. Over a period, however, we have seen that Phillips curve has been flattening. Now, this is uh, really interesting. If you look at the data in the US, uh, some of the decades, especially during the time of high inflation, this did not hold true. You could read an article. This is an excellent piece and it's freely available, uh, which is true that the, the Phillips curve has flattened over a period of time, usually. But let's look at the data and see from other countries. Taken the data, a simple regression analysis. The simple regression analysis is important because it gives you an idea of causality. This does not mean it's a hundred percent guarantee. There are a lot of, of ways you could find out or you can check how true the analysis is. Now, what I've taken, we've taken the data, a simple uh, bivariate scatter plot where X is the independent variable, which is unemployment. So this is the independent variable. And you have CPI, which is inflation, as the dependent variable. When you do regress, you get this particular equation. Here you see this is actually a positive slope, not a negative slope. And you get an equation. Look at y is equal to 0.1441x plus 0.8153. What it means is 0.8153 is the intercept at x equal to 0. You can say if you put x is equal to 0, you get y equal to this particular figure. If this particular figure is the intercept which you say, but what it means is an increase in the unemployment rate by 1% increases CPI by which we saw the figure as 0.141 units or it could be percentage here, keeping other factors constant. Now why I'm saying this is as we go forward, as we get more variables to regress, this value would also change. So, so that's the whole idea here is just to get an introduction because the next follow up module will be on regression analysis. But here, when we look at R square, which we are looking at, what it means is R square of point zero. It, it means that the unemployment rate is only explaining 0.126% of the variability. So what we want to find is, is the slope significant? If, if you want to see that the two relations have a causality, that means they have to have a slope. If the, is the regression valid? The whole idea is what is regression. So these topics would come in. Usually when you regress and this will be done in Excel, you'll get these figures, you'll get multiple R, R square, adjusted R square. Usually, you, you know, people use uh, F test for multiple regression analysis, but simple regression analysis, you can do P value and T stat. The best is to use P value. Now, if you have a confidence interval of 95%, you will look at, let's say, if you're looking at the variable, you look at this particular value. Is this value less than 0 0.05? If it is not, it is not significant. You could refer to the tutorials. There are a lot of tutorials on confidence index and hypothesis test on the middle road under this statistics section. If you look at the P value, if you think, look at 0.44, is not less than 0 0.05. So this is not significant. So what it shows is that the regression doesn't hold. 
just in the end i did an observation for even a smaller period of time quarterly observations which we did last time we have 20 ob uh, observations means 20 quarters we have observed regression analysis and if relation which clearly shows that if unemployment rate increases by one person that is more people are unemployed by one person the inflation would come down by 0 0.1607 units and there is also an increase in the variability in the sense it explains 30.1 but still this is very low p-value so at least the p-value is less than 0.5 so which means that this equation at least holds right looking at that now this is to wrap up and uh, to uh, just to suggest that uh, there'll be next an introduction to the simple linear equation now this is a part of a mega series and when you look at the whole uh, series and you you will have have much better understanding when I'm talking about CPI and what different measures different central banks take.